What's the difference between Linux Mint and Ubuntu? On the surface, they might look very similar. Both are based on Debian, both use APT for package management, and both run much of the same software. But dig a little deeper and you'll find some important distinctions that can affect your experience as a user. In this video, I'll walk you through 7 key differences between Ubuntu and Linux Mint. From their design philosophies to performance, user interface and system resources and help you figure out which one might be a better fit for you. So whether you're new to Linux or just using your next Linux distro, let's break it down. Let's start with a desktop environment. One of the biggest and most immediately noticeable differences is the desktop environment, which controls the way your system looks and feels, everything from the panel layout to how Windows behave. Ubuntu comes with GNOME by default, GNOME is modern, sleek, and designed with simplicity in mind. It has a unique workflow with a full screen app launcher, dynamic workspaces, and minimal distractions. But it's quite a change if you're coming from Windows, and some people find it less intuitive at first. Linux Mint, on the other hand, offers three desktop environments Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. Most users go with Cinnamon, which is Mint's flagship. Cinnamon is clean, traditional, and very familiar, especially if you've used Windows. There is a start menu style launcher, a taskbar, system tray. It feels like home for a lot of people switching from Windows. So if you prefer traditional desktop layout and want a smoother transition, Linux Mint with Cinnamon might be your best bet. But if you open to a more modern and minimalist workflow, Ubuntu's GNOME offers that experience. But a quick heads up, there are also official Ubuntu flavors that use other desktops like KDE, XFCE, Mate, and even Cinnamon. But the main addition sticks with GNOME. So if you like the traditional desktop experience that Mint offers but still want to stick with Ubuntu as your base, you can use Ubuntu with Cinnamon. Or if you want to run it on older PCs or laptops, you can use Xubuntu or Lubuntu, which are lightweight Ubuntu-based options that also work great on older PCs or laptops with limited hardware. The second major difference is performance, especially in terms how much RAM and CPU power each distro uses. Ubuntu with GNOME is relatively heavy. It has a polished design, but it's also demanding. It can easily use over 1.5GB of RAM just sitting idle. If you're running it on an older machine or a system with limited resources, you might notice some lag or sluggishness. But of course, if you run it on a relatively new computer, you probably won't notice a difference. Linux Mint, especially in the XFCE or Mate editions, is much lighter. Even the Cinnamon version, while a bit heavier than XFCE, generally uses less RAM than Ubuntu's GNOME. It boots faster, runs snappier, and is overall more efficient on mid-range and low-end hardware. But if you switch to one of the lighter editions like XFCE, it can run nearly half that amount, using around 800 to 900 megabyte of RAM when idling. That's a big difference, especially on older machines. So if you're working with an older PC or laptop, or you just want something that feels fast and responsive without using a lot of RAM, Linux Mint, particularly the XFCE or even Mate edition, is definitely the better choice in this category. How each distro handles software and updates. Ubuntu uses Snap packages, a newer format developed by Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu. Snaps are self-contained and easy to install, but they often load slower, use more disk space, and some users don't like the centralized approach, like Snap packages are hosted mainly on Canonical servers. Linux Mint, by contrast, blocks Snap by default. It sticks to the traditional DEB packages and supports Flatpak, which is another universal package format, but more community-driven and flexible. For many users, this gives a greater sense of control and transparency. If you're someone who prefers a clean, minimal system without extra services running in the background, you might appreciate how Mint handles software more than Ubuntu. What's the overall experience and the software that comes pre-installed? Linux Mint puts a strong focus on out-of-the-box usability. It comes with most of what you need to get started. A full suite of useful apps like a media player, a full office suite, LibreOffice, a calculator, a backup tool, 
and even codecs for playing MP3s, DVDs and other media formats. Though you need to checkmark a box during the installation to make sure those multimedia codecs will be installed on your system. So for a lot of users, especially beginners, it's ready to go immediately after installation. No extra setup needed. Ubuntu, on the other hand, takes a slightly more minimal approach. It includes essential apps like Firefox, but it gives you options during the installation. You can choose to install additional software like an offline-friendly selection of office tools, utilities, a web browser, and even multimedia codecs. These codecs are important if you want to play certain video and audio files right out of the box. The process is simple, but if you skip that step during installation, you might run into issues later, like a video not playing, which can be confusing for beginners who aren't sure what's missing. So if you want a system that just works right after install, Mint might offer a more complete experience without needing to tinker. The question is, how much control do you have over your desktop? Mint, particularly with the Cinnamon desktop, offers a high level of customization. You can easily change themes, move panels, install desktop widgets, and tweak just about everything through its settings menu, no extensions or command line tools needed. Actually, I have a full video how to tweak and customize your Linux Mint panel, so if you're interested, I'm gonna put a link in the description. Make sure to check it out. Ubuntu, while it does allow customization, is more locked down by design. GNOME is intentionally minimalist and streamlined. You can change themes and layouts, but it often requires additional tools like GNOME tweaks or installing extensions. And even then, not everything is easily changeable. If you're enjoying tailoring your desktop to fit your style, Mint gives you more flexibility right out of the box. Ubuntu can be customized too, but it takes a bit more effort and know-how. Let's talk about community philosophy and support behind each distro and how they are maintained. Ubuntu is developed and backed by Canonical, a private company. That means it has corporate level support, funding and long-term planning. It's also widely used in professional environments, servers and cloud infrastructure. The community is large and there is tons of documentation available. Linux Mint, on the other hand, is a community-driven project. It's maintained by a smaller team and supported by donations. Its development is very focused on the desktop user, particularly those looking for a Windows-like experience or a system that's stable, familiar, and distraction-free. While some users choose Ubuntu for its large-scale infrastructure and ecosystem, others favor Mint for its community-driven, user-centric philosophy, where developers prioritize refining the desktop experience over chasing the latest technologies. And last but not least, let's talk about release cycles. How often new versions come out and how they affect stability. Ubuntu follows a regular release schedule. There is a new version every 6 months and every 2 years, canonical releases and LTS long term support version that gets 5 years of updates. These LTS versions are what most users and companies rely on because they prioritize stability over cutting edge features. Linux Mint is usually based on Ubuntu's LTS versions, not the short term releases. This means Mint intentionally stays behind the curve a bit to ensure everything is tested, polished, and reliable. As a result, Mint updates less frequently, but the trade-off is a very stable and dependable system with fewer surprises. In addition to the Ubuntu-based versions, Linux Mint also has a separate edition called LMDE, short for Linux Mint Debian Edition. This version is based directly on Debian, not Ubuntu. It uses the Cinnamon desktop and is intended as a backup plan in case Ubuntu ever becomes unsuitable as the base. LMDE doesn't follow a strict release cycle like the main Mint editions. Updates come less frequently and is more geared towards advanced users or those who prefer to stay closer to Debian. If you like having the latest software and enjoy trying new features, Ubuntu might be more your style. But if you value a rock-solid desktop that doesn't change too often, Linux Mint's lower and more cautious release cycles is likely a better fit. Alright, let's quickly recap the 7 key differences between Ubuntu and Linux Mint. Number 1. The desktop environment. Ubuntu uses GNOME, 
while Linux Mint uses Cinnamon, Mate or XFCE. Number 2. Performance. Mint is lighter and faster on older hardware. Number 3. Software management. Ubuntu uses Snap, Mint avoids it and favors Flatpak. Number 4. User experience. Mint is more complete out of the box. Number 5. Customization. Mint offers more control and is easier to tweak. Number 6. Community and philosophy. Ubuntu is corporate backed while Linux Mint is community driven. Number 7. Release cycle. Ubuntu updates more often while Linux Mint prioritizes stability using Ubuntu's LTS versions. At the end of the day, both are great Linux distros and they share a lot under the hood, but they serve slightly different audiences. Choose Linux Mint if you want something that works well out of the box. Prefer a familiar Windows-like layout or have an older hardware and want better performance. Choose Ubuntu if you prefer a modern, touch-friendly interface, like being closer to the latest features, want a system backed by a large company with a widespread support. Well, this is it. I hope this video was helpful to you and helped you decide which distro you would like to stick to. I tried to make this guide as complete as possible. Of course, there might be some things that I have missed. Let me know if I missed anything and let me know what is your favorite Linux distro and which one you're planning to use. If you want to know how to install Linux Mint on your computer, I have a full guide that you can check out where I explain everything step by step. Also, if you still want to be using Windows for some reason, you can create a dual boot setup with Linux Mint and Windows 10, for example. For that, I have also another video you can check out. But this is it for today. I hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please support with a like. Also, if you're first time to this channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. This will help me a lot to grow my channel, bring you more helpful, interesting videos. And of course, if you're going to have some questions, comments, suggestions, please drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to read your comments and help you if I can. Also, if you would like to support my channel, you can use super thanks or simply buy me a coffee. The links are in the description. But this is it for today. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.